What are you thinking? Don't mean to offend you, but it feels like you've been drinking, talking to you like an old friend. I can't pretend. I can't pretend. You say, have a little gratitude. Don't mean to come across with so much attitude. The nights are long, they don't bring rest. I do my best. I do my best. You made the scars Sometimes it's hard to figure out What's yours, what's ours The reason why Truth is hard to see I pray for you You pray for me Pray for me You say everyone's fighting a battle I don't know about, so have a little grace. Some can't hear, some are blind, so be kind. Be kind. You made the star. You made the scars Sometimes it's hard to figure out What's yours, what's ours The reason why Love is hard to do You pray for me And I'll pray for you Pray for you Why is love the hardest thing to do? You pray for me and I pray for you. In the coziness of the chapel on a snowy day, let us seek the way of God. Uh, big thank you to Christina Trulio for being here this morning. And she is going to be leading us in the community song. We can all stand. Um, and a couple notes on this. Uh, was, this, was, this community, was this song written by Terry Moran? No. no it's oh, no. Okay, it was not written by Eric Moran. But, or t Terry Moran. But here's where you all come in on this song. You are the bold, okay? So where it's bolded, don't let nobody drag your spirit down. That's you. And uh, I'll let you know, I'm singing a verse here, and they just sprung this on me like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> so let's do it. I know, excuses, excuses. You might slip. You might slide, stumble and fall by the roadside. You don't let ever let nobody drag your spirit down. Don't let nobody drag your spirit down. Remember we're walking up to heaven. Don't let nobody turn you around. Walk with the rich, walk with the poor. Learn from everyone that's what life is for. Don't let nobody drag your spirit down. Don't let nobody drag your spirit down. Remember we're walking up to heaven. 
say things sound strange to you, might preach the gospel I believe is true. I can't let nobody drag my spirit down. Don't let nobody drag your spirit down. Well, I'm walking up to heaven, won't let nobody turn me around. You might slip, child, no, you might slide. Nobody drag your spirit down. Spirit down. Remember we're walking up to heaven. Don't let nobody turn you around. We're walking up to heaven. We're walking up to heaven. Don't let nobody turn you around. Ooh. Let us pray. God, may the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord, Rock, and Redeemer. Amen. Please say hello to those you are seated near. Welcome, welcome. If you are new to the community church, you can see we've had to um, put two tables back there uh, for all the things going on. There's lots to sign up for. So I want to say the men's dinner uh, is, that's a pretty fun event every year. That is Monday, March 5th at 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, at the Gorton Center. And this year, a fellow by the name of Tyler Smith some of you may know him, basketball player, played pro basketball on the European circuit, I think primarily. Uh, he's going to be here, so please sign up uh, back there, uh, hard copy. I think you can also sign up uh, on the website uh, or in the newsletter uh, that was sent out this week. Uh, Bocce follows that up, so that's a Monday night, and then Saturday night, March 10th, is Bocce. Last year we had a huge group come out for that. It's going to be fantastic again. That's 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. We're hoping the North Avenue All-Stars are going to defend their title or try to defend their title and be unseated, hopefully. Uh, I think if J Jay, you, you might see to it that they get unseated. You classes with Elliot, uh, go on the website. You can find the information for that, right, Elliot? Okay, yep, yep. Centering prayer happens every Sunday uh, at 9 a.m. Uh, across the Breezeway in Reed Hall 100. Uh, we typically have a pretty good group over there. Uh, and we also host Centering Prayer, uh, what we call midweek meditation, at the Gorton Center, 6.30 a.m. and 9 a.m. every week, uh, unless something unforeseen happens. But... Um, like snowfall. Uh, but that happens every week. Uh, and we're also teaching a class right now, and that has launched, called Kiss the Joy. Uh, if you haven't gotten into that class, you can do round two whenever that happens. Christina Trulio, again, thank you very much for being here today. 
Uh, note on Christine, I overheard, she didn't give me permission to say this, but she said to, uh, she said to Ken, you know, I picked this guitar up at Costco a few years back, and it has a really beautiful sound. So that's, that is, if you, if expense is the problem of getting an instrument and getting started playing, Christine is proving that that is no hurdle. <laughs> Uh, but it sounds beautiful. She says people who really know guitars play and go, wow, that's got good sound. Good. Uh, so in the, um, the song that I opened with, Dear God, I used that quotation in the third verse. Um, everybody's fighting a battle you don't know about. And this song is about a battle that was being fought. And being a songwriter, sometimes I pay more attention than others. Sometimes I'm not so good at it. but. This song was just a blow-by-blow -blow description <laughs> of what actually happened one day when I was paying attention and someone was fighting one of those battles. It's called Ghosts of Asheville. Sitting in a bar two days after Christmas Black guy walks in, orders a scotch neat Then he quickly orders a number Says I ducked in to beat the cold out on the street Up from North Carolina, he says to the bartender, my son, he died last week. People won't let the old stuff go. No, I need sanctuary. Bartender walks away, pretends to dry the glass. So the guy turns and he starts talking to an old white couple sitting on his right. Sanctuary says it's all I'm asking. Everybody wants to be a wise man. No one wants to be a shepherd in me, I just want the ghost to go. Outside, the shoppers walk by. The sun starts to shine on the snow. Tender brings over a small plate of bread and some water. He says, hey, take it slow. Guy says, you see, I got three daughters. Came all this way to pay my respects, but they just won't let it go. Everybody wants to be a no one wants to be the shepherd in me. I just want the ghost to go. Sanctuary says that's all I'm asking. The sun starts to shine on the snow. Sanctuary says it's all I'm asking.
so this is the second of three Sundays that, that I get to preach in a row. And so I thought, you know, the obvious thing to do when you get three Sundays to preach is you preach on the Trinity. Really easy topic, you know, easily explained. Um, but so, and we're just scratching the surface clearly. But God was last week, kind of the formless God. Uh, Christ is this week uh, with form. And then spirit will be next week, uh, really energy, right? So for, um, formless, form, and then uh, energy of the spirit next week. Uh, okay, so the scriptures, I have three of them. They're in your bulletin. Uh, the first one, John 1, 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. Hebrews 1.3, long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by a son whom he appointed heir of all things through whom he also created the worlds. That's a plural there if you didn't catch that, the worlds. Colossians 1, 15 through 17, Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in Christ, all things in heaven and earth were created. Christ is before all things, and in Christ, all things hold together. Okay, the bar joke. Four gentlemen walked into a bar. Jesus of Nazareth, a guy from Lake Forest, a guy from Lake Bluff, and Christ. They all walked into the bar. Now, the bartender says, what do you have? Kind of looks at Jesus. And Jesus says, I'll have the house cab, right? Nice and casual. I'll have the house cab. Christ says, bring me a crystal stem filled with water. The waiter brings the glass of water. And just as Christ touches the crystal, the water turns this beautiful burgundy. The gentleman from Lake Bluff says, uh, I'll take a honey badger beer if you have one. <laughs> and the uh, Lake Forest guy, you know, sort of well-appointed, handsome, thoughtful, says, um, smelling the notes of tobacco, you know, and leather and sour cherry uh, wafting his way, his favorite, you know, his favorite kind of wine from Christ's glass, and remembering the water to wine story in Cana, says, make that two crystal stems filled with water, please. Uh, you know, thinking he's going to get the good stuff. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for the Lake Forest gentleman, uh, while Christ can do some crazy stuff, like turn water to wine, uh, he might not be paying attention to what you ordered. That's your laugh line. Um, <laughs> it's really tough as a comedian to have to coach laugh lines. Uh, so what is the difference between Jesus and Christ? If that story didn't help explain it. The Gospels tend to use the name Jesus. Uh, the letters of St. Paul uh, use the title Christ, and there's a good reason for this that we're not going to go into this morning. 
Um, but the assertion of today's sermon is this. There's indeed a major difference between Jesus and Christ, uh, and yet we tend to casually use the name and the title interchangeably, um, which is okay as long as we understand the difference. Um, so we live, I live with my family uh, near Woodlands Academy, just south of us here. I often take runs through the school property, and on the property, I don't know if you've ever seen this beautiful bronze statue of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Have you seen this? Um, and Jesus is lightly touching his chest. There's a heart on his chest. Uh, and the statue stands on a big piece of rock uh, with a Latin inscription carved into the rock, uh, Adveniat Regnum Tuum, Thy Kingdom Come. Uh, the Sacred Heart statue often reminds me uh, of an experience I had with a picture of the Sacred Heart of Jesus uh, about 10 years or so ago uh, while staying at an ashram, which is a Hindu monastic community uh, near the Great Sand Dunes National Park. Uh, and it's called the Haida Kandi Ashram. This experience for me was a new, the beginning of a new understanding of the difference between Jesus and Christ. Uh, Haida Kandi is a funky place. Um, besides being an ashram, which is sort of funky in and of itself, usually monastic communities are, they're just different. Um, but it is one of about 50 spiritual communities that are dotted uh, in and amongst the, pin amongst the pinyon and juniper forests uh, at the foot of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, a really stunning place. 14,000 foot peaks behind it. Um, and a stunning place and also a fitting place uh, to encounter the sacred heart of Jesus, right? Um, when I arrived, being that it's the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, when I arrived at the ashram, um, I was ex escorted to my sleeping quarters uh, to drop off my bags. And I came into this big room with all these single beds and no one was there. I was told to pick a bed. I was the only one for the night. And so I threw my bag on a bed and went for dinner with, with all the other ashram people. Uh, I didn't go down, you know, have some nice wine um, like the Lake Forest guy tried to. Um, when I returned to the room, I discovered that the bed I'd chosen, seemingly by random, was the only bed with a picture of Jesus um, hanging above it. And it was a sacred, sacred heart of Jesus, you know, just like the statue down here. Um, after further exploration, it seemed it was the only picture of Jesus at the ashram um, anywhere. And I had it hanging over my bed that I thought I'd picked by random. Uh, it was one of those, hmm, what's going on here moments. You know, we've all kind of had those moments. So the next morning, I mentioned my experience to the abbess of the ash ashram. Her name is Ram Lodi. Uh, you wouldn't know it with that name, but she's also the aunt of Luke, Wal of Luke uh, Walton. Yeah, Luke Walton, Bill Walton's son current head coach of the Lakers. She had some good stories. And I related that I was sort of astonished that I, a Christian minister, visiting the ashram, unknowingly chose the only bed, the only place in the joint with the sacred heart of Jesus hanging over it. And Ram Lodi, to my surprise, was totally unsurprised. And she said to me, her response was something like, of course. Uh, that's, of course that's where you would have slept. Um, Jesus is the face of God, made manifest, incarnate on earth, 
that you know. Um, I'd certainly thought about God being bigger than one tradition prior to this, bigger than one particular faith, um, incarnated maybe in more than one person on earth, but I had never experienced it and felt it in such a personal way. Uh, before we dive into who Christ is, let's get a couple things straight about Jesus. Um, the name Jesus is simply the Latin version of the Hebrew Yeshua or Joshua, the way we would say it. Uh, it'd make a lot more sense if we use the name Joshua, frankly, but because that's not the tradition, the tradition comes through the Latin, um, we get Jesus. Um, and it sounds a lot more foreign, actually, to say Jesus than Joshua. Um, but Jesus is a personal name, the way uh, that Lydia or Henry or Francis or Jan or Zach or whatever your name is, a personal name. Joshua was and is a very common Jewish name. Joshua is the fully human part of Jesus Christ. Just like you and me, Joshua, I'll call him Joshua because I think that gives a little, a little different perspective. Joshua was a baby that cried, that needed fed from his mother, that grew in body and mind, that uh, eventually became a teenager, and who, like most teens that don't want to be around uh, their parents, actually went off and got lost, and they didn't know where he was. Uh, they were kind of fretting. You know, Mother Mary is, where, where's Jesus? You know, he's not here. He's not with us. They couldn't find him. Jesus had a body that aged and got weary, a body that ate food and defecated, I say that because it brings it home. Uh, drank liquids and urinated. We're talking, hu this is human stuff. Grew, uh, you, uh, a human. A human felt his chest and felt the heartbeat. Jesus of Nazareth lived in a particular time, uh, in, a, in a particular culture, with particular customs and ways of speaking and thinking about the world. If someday in the future uh, we find life on distant planet somewhere in the universe that has been a, a universe that's been expanding for 14 billion years, uh, Jesus of Nazareth won't be there. But Christ is. Okay, so with this thought in mind, let's shift our attention to Christ. Christ is a title, not a name, right? It's not the last name of Jesus. Um, it is Greek for the Hebrew word Messiah, uh, meaning the anointed one, or you might say the enlightened one. Um, so what constitutes Christ? Franciscan Richard Rohr says, Christ is the state when spirit and matter become one. I think this is a pretty solid definition. But to bring it sort of home to us, it's sort of like red and yellow make orange. Right? These two things together and make a, new, a different thing. If Christ is the state when spirit and matter meet and become one, then all matter is knowingly or unknowingly part of the body of Christ. As humans, we can tap into our full capacity, our full nature, or we can resist. We tend to resist. For a frog, it's no problem. Its frogness, its place in creation, comes effortlessly. For a tree, it just stretches for the sun and reaches down 
with its roots for water, its treeness and, and its place in creation happens without hesitation. But for humans, because of our conscious minds, things are far more complicated. St. Peter said, you are the temple of the divine. We don't believe it. We get all hung up. Humanity has an endless capacity for self-loathing and doubt. Henry Nouwen uh, calls this humanity's original sin. And yet, there is no you. You only exists in and with the whole. The frog doesn't know that, but the frog does that. The tree doesn't know that, but the tree does that. When we release the illusion of our singularity and self-loathing, uh, self-striving, we're ready to let the spirit rush in and take, and we take our harmonious place, uh, living from our full capacity in what Plato called the great chain of being. The body of Christ, matter and spirit made one. And so there I was, seeking God, seeking Christ, at a Hindu ashram in the foothills of the Sangre de Cristos, lying beneath the picture of the heart of Jesus, the face that I associated with Christ, and knew truly and, uni and universally for the first time um, that, that this was, you know, uh, how, how I knew, how I knew Christ. Um, and at least that's how I remember it. Um, and I felt my bones and the spirit, the wisdom of the Dalai Lama who said, uh, the number one obstacle to interfaith is an immature and poor relationship with one's own faith tradition. And I felt as if one more little obstacle had been cleared in my life. We might rephrase this uh, wisdom. The number one obstacle to Christ is an immature and poor relationship with one's own Christ tradition. I can chew on that a little bit. Now, I keep a print uh, of a Northwest First Nations style Jesus. In American speak, that's Native American. Um, I keep this print of a Northwest First Nations styled Jesus the Christ over my bedside table. Uh, I acquired the print as a divinity student in Vancouver, BC. It reminds me that Christ is universal, not tribal. God can be black. Christ can be black or white, First Nations, or any man or woman on earth for that matter, when spirit and matter have become one. And they are. Uh, Christ comes again. When you realize the oneness of material and spiritual. And I circle back to, to close. Adveniat regnum tuum. Thy kingdom come, a kingdom that is already here. As Jesus said in the Gospel of Luke, God's kingdom, God's presence and reality of being is here within you. The sacred heart of Christ. Amen. Uh, we will now uh, pass the hat and know that as we pass the hat, we are so grateful for uh, all, the gratu all the graciousness that you show the community church making this community happen.
Faster than the train from Kansas Faster than the dust clouds roll Didn't know just what the plan was I had nowhere else to go So I jumped into that box car With my fiddle and my wits Nothing but some grime and time Sticking to me like the journey and the grit All the way to California Taking any job I could Making music on the side In the sweet and swing of Hollywood Met her sitting at a table Listening to the big band beat She was married at the time But I swept her off her feet It was early in December When the locusts hit the shore On a warm Hawaiian morning I knew I was off to war Dear Betty over here now In a strange, unglamorous life I'm not feeling like a hero Miss my baby, miss my wife Faster than the train from Kansas Faster than the dust clouds roll Everything around us the spirit and matter cohering coming together go into this week with eyes to see the reality of that statement, living into it, being part of it, rejoicing in it, that then, there, is the second coming of Christ. Amen. And the people said, Amen. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places. That this heart of mine embraces all day through In that small cafe, the park across the way The children's carousel, the chestnut tree, the wishing
I'll be seeing every lovely summer's day in everything that's light and gay. I'll be looking at the moon